everyone. It's another sit down interview in my glam room. I, one day we'll turn this into the glam room that it's meant to be, but that day is not today. We are working on it. It'll happen, but um, yeah, for now it's my glam room and I'm very grateful for it. I love it. I have nice drawers. I have a nice table. I have nice mirrors, all that stuff like that. Um, <laughs> it's just, I just don't organize better. I'm just so bad at organizing. Gosh, when people, when I see people organize, I just have that really nice aesthetic. I am just, I'm really envious of that. I've just never been that person. I admire it. I want to look at it. I think it's beautiful, but like I just, I I just can't. Um, is that me or distracting as I'm talking about my postpartum body? Postpartum body. It's got this like weird angle of my I mean, it's fine, I don't care. Give me all the angles, baby. Uh, no, that's not true. Actually, I do care, and I actually am feeling self-conscious, and um, I just should put a trick warning. This, this is about my uh, body and how uh, I kind of feel a little um, negatively towards my body at the moment. Um, actually, like, really negative. And, but, but what I'm trying to do to change that, what I'm trying to do to focus on what I do like about my body and what I appreciate about my body and, like, what I'm doing to actively try to change it. But one of the biggest things for me, when I first... The first couple months postpartum, I actually really loved my body. I actually lost weight during pregnancy. After I gave birth, I was really down to the initial, um, uh, to where I started. I, I, I really, I've talked about this numerous times. During my pregnancy, I felt so full. My carried really high. I physically couldn't eat a lot. I would have like literally like half a piece of lasagna. Like, you know, at Benihana, I could maybe finish like a quarter bowl of rice and a little bit of chicken when I could usually do chicken steak, double shrimp, double fried rice, and white rice. You know what I mean? So it was very like a shock to me and it was great because I was like, wow, this is so great. So really the weight I gained was just literally just like what you grow with baby, you know, and all that stuff. So when I gave birth, I was really down to the starting weight. And then like a week later when I came for my checkup, I was like below what I started with, which was like, wow. And then I was like, I think I was down to like 218, 216. I haven't weighed myself since then. I know I've gained weight. I feel it in my clothes. I see it in myself. I see it in my face. And one of the biggest struggles for me now, I am five months postpartum, is when my appetite came back. I don't consider myself to be overindulgent. We do cook at home a lot. We don't cook a lot of pastas. And you guys know pasta and cheese are my thing. We don't do too much of that. We maybe have our lasagna once a week, something like that is. And we do have pizza once a week. So maybe we do. Maybe that's a lot to some people. To us, I was eating noodles like every day, butter noodles, cheese, all that stuff like that. So on the other times we have like chicken, not fried, lean chicken. I do eat fast food. Okay, look, my diet's not great. And I am going to change my diet like a little bit. You know, I can tweak some things, right? I, I I do do three meals a day because I do find that I'm like just, I sustain energy better that way, but I'm just not going to like, while I was pregnant, I kind of eat whatever. I could go and have pancakes. I can only have like three bites of pancakes. Now when I go have pancakes, I finish it. Um, so it's not that I'm not going to eat pancakes. It's just like I can't have pancakes and then lasagna and then like I used to because I used to just eat like a little portion of it. And then I try to do the portion control thing and like it's, yeah, I just got to get back to that. Um, but also just, you know, picking and choosing my indulgent meals and not having them twice a day or whatever. Um, but the biggest, biggest, biggest issue I've had with my body postpartum is this belly area. And it's particularly when I sit and it's not just the aesthetic. I'll do the aesthetic is not, I don't like it because I've always been a bigger girl. As you guys have known, I've always been a bigger girl, but I think, and this sounds like a humble brag and maybe it is, but I've always had a nice shape, meaning not to say if you have a bigger belly, you don't have a nice shape at all. Like, I don't mean that. But for me, like, I always felt lucky that I had, you know, a pretty nice proportion. I had kind of hourglass when I, when I would sit, you know, it was, it was chest and it was hips and it was nice, you know, to my eye. And again, this all has to do, this is all about me. If, if you are having something that I'm talking about, I don't want you and I can't say that you won't because I know I feel triggered when people smaller than me say that they're fat and this and that. I'm like, wow, then I must be my gigantic arms and all this stuff like that. Like, okay, we all have things we don't like about each other, but, um, or about ourselves really. And so for me, it's my, this belly and it's again, not just the aesthetic of it, which I, you know, it's big, you know, it's big. And I'm not going to lie. Like, obviously I, ha I, I feel it. And what, what's crazy about it postpartum is I never had a belly that sat like this, right? Like if I gained weight even before light, but if I gained weight, it wasn't necessarily like right here, like up here. It's still very pregnant -y. It never rounded out like that before pregnancy. So I, I don't know, like it's, it's, it's a lot of fat just sitting here. Um, as was even before lipo, it would kind of go back. And then of course, after I had my lipo, it kind of like suction. So I don't know if it like 
I don't know if you can reverse lipo. I don't know what happened, but yeah, I just, I, I mean, I, again, I see it in my arms. I see it in my forearms. Like I, I know I've gained weight back. I, I'm not going on the scale anytime soon. Um, I do feel overall puffy, but again, this is more than the aesthetic. It's more the breathing when I'm sitting. It's like, it does, I can't, I physically, it doesn't feel good to breathe. When I lay down at night, I'm like having trouble breathing and it's like, okay, that's when I know it's a problem for me. And I've never really struggled again with belly fat, really. I've never had that jiggly belly a little bit, but nothing like, you know, I was like, wow, I'm kind of blessed because as a bigger person, there's like a couple blessings, right? I always like to focus on the positive, right? And if you're a bigger person and you struggle with it, if you don't, I admire you. But if you do struggle with it, find something that you, maybe you have nice toned arms. I don't. But for me, I always like, you know what, my face, which is kind of puffy right now, but I was like, my face looks nice. I always thought I had a pretty good stomach for being bigger. And I was always lucky that I didn't really have stretch marks a little bit on my uh, uh, boobs, but nowhere else. Like I, you know, the, I consider myself lucky for that. But again, I, like I said, I have forearms and this, and I can just tell you all the things wrong. So before anyone's like, well, I have stretch marks. You must think is that I don't, and I don't look at anyone's body. Once again, I do not look at anyone else's body and think anything is wrong with their body at all. Like everything is, is me based. So I hope again, I mean, I put the trigger warning, but I really, I really want to reiterate that because this is just stuff that I was like, okay, let me look for the positive as a fat girl. Let me look at the positives. Like I have a nice waist. I don't have stretch marks. I have a nice face. Like, okay. Um, but you know, there's a thousand other things I think is wrong and quote unquote disgusting with me. And I, you know, when I was pregnant, I felt really beautiful. I was like, okay, I'm growing a belly. It was very firm. It felt very, I was stopping to eat when I was when I was full and that felt so great because I don't know that feeling outside of that. Oh, sitting and having such a large belly is, is really new and it's, it's, it's loose. It's very loose. Like I can, I can pinch it. Whereas before where it was kind of like tight, kind of, it kind of just looked good, but this is, this is loose. This is all loose. It's, it's, it's something I never had to deal with. I never had this roll right here. When I sat, I used to, you know, I could be like, okay, this, okay, there's a little roll right there, a little roll right there, but this is, you know. And um, again, it's it's also just like a breathing thing, just like, okay, this is like, I feel like I have a tire, the bend down my shoe, like everything just kind of just doesn't feel comfortable. And it's the first time that I haven't really felt comfortable with my midsection. Um, and so I, we walk, three times a week. I'm going to really try and walk every single day. Now that just has to be a priority, whether I'm working or not. Like I have to be ready and the days are getting longer. So it's great. It's better. We just have to like leave the house by like three in the winter time to go walk. So now it's like we can leave at four 30 and still get a good hour walk in. And so I'm just trying to walk every day now starting today. That's hence why I'm showing this. This is February 19th, I believe. Um, I'm going back to all water when I was pregnant. I drank all water. Oh gosh, but I love coffee in the morning. Okay, I'm gonna have to look up a Starbucks drink that doesn't have like a lot of sugar or calories because I do love my coffee in the morning. Oh gosh, yeah. But I can cut out sodas. I have been doing so much soda and it started back in like December with the Sprite cranberries. It got me like on a kick and I was just indulging, indulging, indulging because I was just happy and I was just indulging in it. And I, for me, picking and choosing, it's like I'd rather eat my calories than drink my calories, especially the sugar stuff. So I am going to eliminate all liquids except for one morning iced coffee and maybe just like a chai tea latte. Does anyone know how many calories it has? It doesn't have sugar in it, right? I don't know. We'll have to look at that. And maybe there's a way I can make it like skinny because I have to have my coffee in the morning. It like gives me my set. Um, but if I do become pregnant again, which is the goal, I'll give up the coffee again. So maybe I should just give up the coffee, but I love it. It's, it's more than just the coffee. It's more like the mental of my morning routine. I really, really love to get the coffee. So I don't know. Let me know your suggestions with that. So I am doing something we love to go on our walks and we have our rigorous walks. We go on an incline. I have an Apple watch. I don't really wear it in videos because I don't know why. Like, will it show if like a text message comes through or call and like I won't notice and then there's like a phone number that pops up. Like, I'm just worried about that. I don't know. Um, but I do love to wear my Apple watch to get to count my calories. I always wear it when we're on a walk. It's also a really good like family bonding time for us. So I know when well, Rebel Wilson said she lost all her weight, it was during quarantine and she said she should start walking a half hour a day, then became an hour a day. Um, and everyone I know that are walkers, 
my dad included like he walks literally six miles a day for the past like eight years he has like on his watch like can't miss it even if he's up here staying with us if we, we go on a walk but if he doesn't get his six miles in then he'll like be walking upstairs in circles <laughs> like he's really adamant about that so we do about three miles when we go on our walk so the goal is to do three miles daily and then work up to doing three miles in the morning three miles at night that would be the ultimate goal it's very time consuming it takes about an hour and a half for us to do it um so you really have to like give yourself that time and um yeah we're just gonna try and make it work because it's really we even bought like a the we bought another stroller and another car seat yes this is our fourth car seat and stroller and it's uh if you have someone it's called guava i think i think it's named guava it's the guava and it's like meant for like hikes so it's a really smooth ride Malibu sleeps the whole time we just have a really bumpy one and she kind of slept in there but she just like loves this one as soon as she's in it she like falls asleep so um, which is like great, but she also likes to be up. She likes to see like the nature too. Um, so that's what I'm doing to work on it. <laughs> um, like I said, I do, uh, I do have my struggles. I try not to post about them in real time. If I'm like struggling with something with postpartum, whether that's postpartum depression, there's been, you know, li little bits of that here and there. Um, you know, and postpartum just uh, body, I don't even know if it's dysmorphia, but just body self-hatred, you know, I deal with it. I try not to focus on it. Like, that's why when I decided to make this video, I'm like, I want to be real because I am struggling with this. Um, and I don't want people to think that I'm just like always so confident. And here's the thing. Like, I do love my body. I do what I try and do. And just in life in general is to focus on it. I just did a whole thing about like happiness the other day about this. Like where if I'm, if I'm not fully happy, but I may be 5% happy, I'm like, okay, I'm going to focus on that 5% or whatever. You know what I mean? So same thing with now it's like, you know, 95% of me is like, I, I don't like my body. I don't feel good about it. Like I, I'm self-conscious. Like I wear big t-shirts when we go out. I don't want to go out. I don't want to see people. Um, which is like awful. Um, but then I do focus on the parts that I do love and that I'm proud of one that are grew a baby you know gave life felt like that's like the most beautiful thing I think my body's done um and just also like you know my, my love that my skin feels very smooth and I love that you know it I don't I'm not gonna say this like PC but like you know my, my husband loves my body you know what I mean like it's um it feels good to be in my body it feels you know what I mean like it does feel good at a lot of times for instance, when I stand up, watch the confidence. Okay, here we go. Let me just back, back this up here. You know, when I stand up and I do like this little thing, I'm like, okay, like I, I look good, you know? And when I'm walking, I feel good. Like it feels a lot tighter and you know, it, it's just, it's a lot wider here, but I feel, I do feel good when I stand up. I'm like, okay, I look, you know, I look good. I like can feel myself. You know what I mean? I. I do like the way I look at times. So it's really just kind of getting into a routine again, my face being fuller. I'm also going to be 35 in May. Yikes. I do want to get pregnant again. And I, my starting weight and my last pregnancy was 226. And my goal was to be closer to 200 when I got pregnant again. So maybe that's like the plan um, because I did just get my period again and I was actually three days early, which is annoying because I was like, okay, my test ran like a couple days late, which I normally am late, but this time it came early. So I was like, okay, so let me just, you know, I believe in timing. I do believe in timing. Um, not to say if in a couple months it doesn't like happen for us, we want to go and get the HSG test again. We very well might because I am going to be 35 in May. So um, just to more avoid risks. Again, not that people can have healthy babies past 35, past 40. You totally can. I'm just saying for me personally, I would like to try and get pregnant again before, um, you know, to give birth while I'm 35 would be the, the goal. So that's where I'm at and that's where I struggle with. And, um, I think again that I just literally wanted to be real. I feel like with my body, I've always been pretty real. Um, and if, if for any reason it ever comes across that it looks like I'm faking happy and faking this, you know, it's really me just focusing on the good because it's not faking. It's focusing on the good. Even if like, like I said, if I'm, if I'm struggling a certain day, I, I would say if I'm being completely honest, I would say 99% of the time, truly, I'm truly happy. Like I, 
I feel so content. I feel so at peace. I feel so much happiness. You know what I mean? But there is that 1% and sometimes that 1% does be switch. Sometimes it's 99% I'll have a bad day and I'm like, whoa, like I'm just overwhelmed. And I think it was Friday of last week. I mean, there was just like, I was overwhelmed. And there was, it just seemed like one bad news after bad news, like, okay, this thing passed and this is going to happen. And I was just like, oh, I cannot take any more. We had plumbing issues. No way to like redo our whole piping basically in our house. And we like, we're going to get that bill. And I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, it just becomes like so many things. And it's just like, okay, all of it at once. And I was just like, this is just, I need a reset day. I just need a reset day. And then the next morning I woke up and I was like, okay, it was that Saturday. I think I made a video. I think I made a video on that Saturday. And I was like, you know what? I woke up and made the decision. One, no matter what, I have to meditate every morning. Like that's, that's a, a no, no starter, no barter. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? That's a no negotiation. That's a non-negotiable. I don't know. Something like that is what I'm trying to say. Um, morning medication has to happen. Has to happen. I told my husband that. Like, I'm just like, hey, like, you know, has to happen. Because he also has his routine. You know, he does the, in, his, in the morning, he has his routine. So I was like, okay, this has to happen. And done. Even if it's like a 10 minute meditation, like it has to happen. Gratitude has to happen. So I do a gratitude journal. I do meditation. And if I can squeeze a little reading in there, I try and read a couple pages of books. Um, it has to, has to happen. And the other sort of me thing that has to happen is walk, which is like a family thing, which is great because sometimes you can feel guilty for taking me time, but I really don't anymore. I used to, and I hope you guys don't either. If you're parents, new parents, parents, whatever, like it's just, it's just needed. It's just needed for everyone. Everyone needs like their thing putting on your makeup, you know, for me, putting on makeup and getting coffee is like part of my work, right? I do TikTok live while I do my makeup, which is therapeutic. And then I go get coffee and I film that. And so, um, yeah, I just, I, I need that time. And then I need my once a week therapy, which I was kind of neglecting a little bit. I'm like, I just need that check-in. Even if everything is going great, just a check-in. And finally, another non-starter, non-negotiable, whatever I'm trying to say is I cannot seek out like things about me anymore. Like I, I used to kind of Google new search and I do like past 24 hours Google search what comes up with my name and it would just I would see just headlines right from YouTube videos or um obviously like Reddit pages from I just see headlines and without even reading I just like my I start spiraling and that just cannot happen it's so crazy even on Twitter this morning because like just by habit I go to mentions and it just was like there's no mentions like I couldn't see any mentions I was like perfect great that's actually Twitter's doing the work for me so and um, like I said I have a safe space here on YouTube to read the comments Instagram's very nice TikTok is great um, so I kind of am just sticking to these, uh, mediums to post and, um, because there is a lot of so many encouraging words and I do love when the horizontal social media is interacting, especially with like a video like this. I would absolutely love to hear, you know, how you overcame any struggles, insecurities. Is there a belly fat that you struggle with? Are you a walker? Do you have a tip for this, that, or the other low, low calorie coffee? Like I do want to know. Hence why I make these videos, you know what I mean? Not only to be like, hey, I'm going through this too, but also like, what are your suggestions? I need help sometimes. And um, and also that I that I struggle because in no way do I ever want my life to be perfect, or to come across as perfect. Like I said, I think my life for me is perfect. I have like the perfect husband for me. I have the perfect job for me. I have, you know, my daughter is absolutely perfection in every way, but um, that doesn't mean I don't have my own struggles. You know what I mean? And I, I have a lot of struggles. It's just more, how do we cope with them? How do we do it? And for me, it's focusing on the positive and not giving energy to things that are negative, forgiving myself and forgiving others and just kind of you know, trying to mind my own business the best I can. It's again, it's easy to get caught up in gossip. And I scroll through TikTok at night. We do an hour before bed and we do an hour in the morning. Like that's just our ritual. We watch TikTok together. And um, like there's drama on there and it's so easy to get caught up in it or like want to give my opinion on things. I should probably put some chopstick on. Um, <laughs> what if this was just a commercial? This looks like I made a commercial for it. Ew, that's lip balm. I like the minty purple because it's the color of figment from Disney World. Holly Madison's in Disney World and she has all these figment colored things and that's all I'm thinking about. Figment and Holly Madison because I love her. She's queen, icon of our generation. Um, oh god, this smells really good though, for real. What is this? Vanilla mint, I think? Oh no. Triple mint. Wow, this reminds me. This is unlocking a memory, but I don't know what. It's unlocking a memory and I can't think of it. But, um, yeah. And, um, anyways, that, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm struggling. And like I said, it's like the puffy arms in my face and this part. And you know what? Maybe I'd put my legs if I could see them, but I don't really, <laughs> I don't really show my legs. But, um, 
yeah, but I, I like I said, I just you know, just that's all protecting myself and protecting my energy. And again, I don't want it to come across fake. It's really just focusing on that to attract more because law of attraction is so real. There's one thing I learned. It's so real law of attraction. It's so real. And um, yeah, to even just like see drama or anything, it's like, I really just need to like find my own business. So I'm not like thinking things or like, you know, speculating because I'm not speculating about other people's people are speculating about me. And I just don't like that cycle. You know what I mean? So, oh, anyways, isn't that life? I, like, again, and during pregnancy, I was so happy because I was walking, I was meditating, I was staying offline because I wanted a, a really peaceful pregnancy. I just wanted to really enjoy it. And, like, the minute I started, like, looking for things or what people were saying, I started getting a little, like, shaky. And I feel like that's kind of happened now. I'm getting, like, a, I've shaken myself a little bit too much. And, um, and it's hard. And the one thing I will say, and I'm not a victim in this, I think it's just, Probably one of the cruelest things to do is to um, body shame uh, a person postpartum or to shame them as a parent postpartum um, or their choices they're, they've made during birth. Um, I caught glimpses of people critiquing my birth vlog, which could be argued, well, you put that out publicly and that therefore should be open to criticism and critiques. And I'm like, absolutely not. That's one thing I don't think. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I put that out there. It's a beautiful thing. Life is a beautiful thing. Bringing life into this world is a beautiful thing. I don't care if you hate someone or not. Don't watch it if it's going to anger you. But life is a beautiful thing. It's a very traumatizing experience. Becoming a mother for the first time is very it's difficult. It's the, it's so wonderful, but it's so difficult. Nobody knows what they're doing the first time. It's impossible to know what you're doing the first time. I don't care how many books you read, how many nannies, babies, how many kids, children you've watched or report. Like it's just so, it, it's just impossible to know how, wh how hard it is as a parent until you become one. And it's very difficult and you're just nervous all the time. You're worried. You're constantly checking if they're okay, if they're breathing, if you're doing the right thing. And it's, it's a constant and and then on top of that, dealing with obviously the hormonal changes, dealing with, you know, for me, it was like dealing with the pain. I had an opioid addiction and I couldn't, I didn't want to take the prescription pills at home. But then to hear someone shaming me for taking the drugs during my cesarean where they upped it, where they gave me like fentanyl and stuff for it and like being judged for that and then being mocked for my weight gain. And then people will be like, well, we're just trying to point out that you use filters and all this stuff like that. And it's like, that's not... Well, whose place is that to do? I think it's so cruel and I don't care if you're like the worst person still to this day. You know, I, I had come to terms with myself and what I've done. I've, I've asked for forgiveness from people and I forgave myself and I know that I've done this whole, you know, I, I'm, I'm just trying my best. I'm just trying my best. I know I've changed as a person. The minute I found out I was pregnant, I became this different person. I have an entirely different on set and look in life and some people don't want me to change they want to put me in this thing and that's fine again but it's like the level of harassment the dark and nasty things people have said about me and my child and just the lengths people go to like really harass you it's just it's 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 really cruel and um I wouldn't wish it on absolutely anyone and I'm telling you postpartum during pregnancy I was kind of like whatever I just I really just didn't look at it but postpartum it's like it hits very different for me the hormonal changes came postpartum and I still really you know I have a really great support system I will say that like that's like the one piece of advice I'll give is I have a really good support system because I know I was very high risk to suffer from extreme postpartum can it happen up to a year postpartum and that and then some and I just I have a really great support system, thank God, <laughs> and I have a great peace in me, but um, it's, it's, it is tough, I'm not going to lie, to see not only people show screen grabs of my videos, but then to alter them and stuff, it's, it just, it really messes with your head, I know that's the goal, I know my saying this is a little bit of weakness and vulnerability for those people to just keep doing it. Um, again, I always speak on this, just if one person can like have a heart and change and like, be like, okay, we'll like let up during this time, you know, I do it just in hopes that one person does change their mind, you know, cause I, as I say, I know people can change. I know haters can change. I know, I know, I know it can happen. And for me, you know, it took a lot but I just keep saying it. I hope someone will have a heart and change and they don't think any because a lot of people it's not just me get harassed and postpartum harassment is like really it's real and 
um, some people can't handle it, you know, and um, some people don't have that strong support system or they're just not able to take the me time like I can because um, the me time saves me in a lot of ways. So I'm just sorry it's got like really weird and like so emotional, but you know, I, it's, um, I don't know. Again, it's, it's not me pleading for everyone to stop. I know, well, I know people will hate me. I know the, the day that I die, people will be excited and be like, well, remember this, this, and this, and don't forget this, this, and this, 2011, they said this. You know, I know that I'll, that'll be the case, but again, if one person can change, and I've seen it happen, I've gotten emails from people, like like a handful of people have like apologized and stuff like that. And me, I, I will apologize to every single person that I've hurt. And whether it's my fault or not, if, if I've ever hurt someone, I'll always apologize. I the chance to do it in person, the chance to do it online. I feel like I've done it. Um, I, you know, it, it just sucks. And like I said, I'll keep preaching this. I'll keep preaching because it's just, um, <sighs> it can just be a lot. But this, these are, these are like happy tears. I'm telling you, like all of this to say, yes, I do feel bad about my body a lot. And I do suffer sometimes with struggles if I'm a good enough mom if you know I sometimes I'm even like oh gosh like I, I don't know like I don't know if I'm gonna be a good enough mom like you know I'll be a fun mom but am I gonna be like able to like nurture her and teach her lessons and you know do I discipline do I not discipline like it's just like all that stuff can be a lot and overwhelming and I just I take it a day at a time and I just know sorry At the end of the day, I just know that I was meant to be a mom, that this was something that I've wanted my entire life, and it feels so good when I look into her eyes. Oh gosh, sorry. This is my me time here where I cry for a minute, because I just, when I look at her, I try not to cry, because I don't want her to like associate tears with sadness, and I don't want her, her to think I'm sad. Um, but anyways, I sometimes I just look at her and she is just loves life and loves people. We we actually took her to like a, a close friend's art show and she just loves people and loves life and she sees good in every single person and things she doesn't know bad exists in the world. She's just so happy. And I see it. <laughs> I see like so much of me and her and not just like looks wise just I look at her and I see like a little baby me and I just want to like protect her <laughs> protect her and just know make sure she knows how like special she is like she has a light in her and I feel I'm sure all babies do, right? I don't see, I'm not with around a lot of babies, but she has such a light in her and such a love. She just loves everyone. And somewhere along the line, we lose that, right? Sorry, okay. I really wanna make this like, <laughs> somewhere along the line, we lose it. I just don't want her to ever lose it. She's just She's just so full of love and I just, you know, I just want to protect her. And I love her and just, I'm so lucky that she is mine and I get to experience her love every day and she puts it out in the world. People are just so happy when they see her. And again, I'm not saying my daughter is so like, you know, the only baby that I'm, I'm sure every baby's like this, right? Cause they start out so pure and people are so happy when they see them and people just light up like people we don't even know. We'll be like, oh, how, long, how old is she? She's so alert. She's so great. Yeah. She's smiling. People get so happy when she smiles at them and she kind of smiles at everything at this age, which is a beautiful thing, but people get really happy. And I'm just, I'm so like, I really do know that I was meant to be a mom. So when these like thoughts come in or these, you know, uh, I start feeling some type of way, it's like, why am I worried about belly fat when I have this beautiful baby, you know, but it, the two really don't go hand in hand. Like you're still allowed to have struggles. You're still a human being. You're still allowed to feel, you know, want to be your own person. You know, like that might be controversial to say, but it's like, I just, um, anyways, oh. All that to say, um, I don't know. 
I lost the plot somewhere <laughs> on the line, but I am so, so grateful. One for my body, because you know what else is like, I know that it's, it's relatively healthy. Like I, I do watch a lot of TikTok. I get on sad TikTok sometimes where they talk about just the worst things that could happen in life, sickness and chronic illnesses. And I just know overall, I'm very thankful for this body that it is, um, you know, healthy at the moment. I had a healthy pregnancy. I'm very thankful for that. I'm obviously so thankful for my husband and my daughter. So. <laughs> I would think I was pregnant, but now I got my period. I think it's because I got my period yesterday. I'm like a little emotional too. I was kind of like, okay, I really thought, I thought this was the one, you know? Um, but like, I mean, I mean, I just look at them sometimes. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is all I wanted. I have these two people who just love me and I love them. And we created this family and we're in this world together. And it's such a beautiful thing. It's like when I would cry on my kitchen floor, you know, back in the day, like I always would just say, like, I just want someone to love me. I just want that. And, and I got that times a thousand in Moses times a thousand obviously in Malibu but I don't know I really do know the universe is magic in that sense and it's why I never stop believing and dreaming and wishing for the biggest craziest things because I, I just it all comes and it's all blessings. And I and I, I don't think the universe runs out of blessings for anyone. I think we can all have everything we want. I don't think it's like this person has this, so I can't have it. I think we can all have everything we want. And um, I did write down in my manifestation in my gratitude journal. I said, thank you for being skinny. I don't know if I can manifest that. I don't know if I can be thankful for that. But one day, and it's for me, it's just what I would feel like and you know all that stuff like that I don't know maybe that sounds superficial it's just one thing that I just I don't know I don't know <laughs> but maybe I shouldn't wish for something like that you know what I mean like maybe it's just I just been feeling really uncomfortable in my body lately sorry this is going on this is like literally a therapy session I'm sorry I'm like like Venmo each of you for listening but I guess I just been feeling like a little self-conscious about my body lately if you can't tell so Maybe I'll feel different and like, you know, when I was like 180 <laughs> during my tour, I look back and I was like, oh, I was so skinny. But people would probably think 180 for five foot three is like, mm, that's overweight. I looked so good though. So I don't even need to be skinny. I just would like to feel good. All right, guys. I hope you have a great week. Thanks for listening to me and talk. Same thing, yeah, that's more talk. I love pasta. I'm gonna make really good lasagna. It's really good. Anyway, I'm also 35, so maybe, maybe it's just my body changing a lot too. That'll happen soon. Bye, guys. I love you. Thanks for listening to the talk. See you in the next video. Bye.